Risk versus Reward. It's a concept that my channel has lived and died on. Better XP rates, better GP, or just more enticing ways to train a skill. This is the concept that the wilderness was born on. Today, I'm going to be showing you just how rewarding the wildy can be, if you're willing to put in the risk. So if you're new to the wildy, a fan of the wildy, or just looking to maybe see something new, you've come to the right place. For each section of every area, I will be giving you basic setups, but this isn't going to be an in-depth video guide. This is just meant to showcase what the wildy can offer. Let's start with the basics. Our first stop is going to be at level 11 wilderness. The only requirement for this is to have 60 attack for the Vagora's chain mace. It may sound like the upkeep cost for this will be high, but the druids drop many Raynar weeds and rogue pieces, so you can expect to just about break even, if not make a bit of money. At level 99 strength, I was getting around 141,000 strength XP an hour. A large part of this is due to the fact that you can use piety the entire time since there's an altar very close by, which means you can be hitting up to 63 while risking next to nothing. But that's not what we're about here, so let's see what we can hit if we risk near max melee. Also, yes, I know Torva is a thing now, and no, I can't afford it. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! 72. God, that is so satisfying. It's like I'm hitting AGS specs in a 4-tick cycle. At the end of the day, the XP per hour ends up being a little over 30,000 more than the setup where I'm risking nothing, and in this setup I'm risking 30 mil, so not very worth it. But man, those max hits are sexy. Going all the way from one end of the wilderness to the other, it's Dark Crabs. This spot is a personal favorite of mine, as it's where I got my first 99 in the fishing skill. A lot of people never think about this spot for fishing, but it has to be my favorite place to go post level 85. After completing the Wilderness Elite Diaries, you can expect to get around 400k GP an hour and 41k fishing XP an hour at 87 fishing. On top of all that, Dark Crabs are the most AFK fishing in the game. But it doesn't end there. For those of you sweaty gamers out there, you can easily do a two-tick fishing setup, which will more than double your XP and GP per hour. Dark Crabs are even good for those of you who enjoy clue scrolls. Make sure you have your Ring of Wealth imbued equipped, and you can expect to receive around one or two clue scroll bottles per hour, and up to three or four if you do the two-tick method. As you can see, I was doing two-ticking for just three minutes and got lucky with an elite clue scroll. I'll usually just wait until I have an easy-to-elite clue scroll, and then turn them all into Watson for a quick master. Also, if you happen to be a fan of Temporos, then I recommend bringing some of your Spirit Flakes out here, as it will be one of the best places to use them. This will raise the GP per hour by an entire 50%, so then you can expect to get around 600k GP for AFK method, and around 1.5 million GP per hour with the 2-tick method. The Wilderness Altar an area I hold near and dear to my heart, mostly because I've nearly gone into cardiac arrest about six or seven times here. Besides that though, you can expect this place to be best in slot no matter how you use it. Even using the lowest risk method of suiciding an inventory of dragon bones is going to be much more cost effective than using a gilded altar or the ecto functus. But again, low risk just isn't what we do on this channel, so let's see just how fast we can pay our respects. Starting off with the Dragon Bones, I was only interrupted one time during this session. This was about a little over 400 Dragon Bones used, and I even got myself level 79 Prayer. As you can see, the XP rate sitting at 709,000 XP per hour. And on the superior side of things, this of course more than doubles the XP, and this was with a couple more logouts than the Dragon Bones, still at 1.5 million XP an hour. You could have lower rates than this, or heck, you could even have higher rates than this depending on the activity, but this is what I got in roughly around three or 400 superior dragon bones. Keep in mind that this is in multi and in a highly active area, so you want to maximize that mage defense. You do not want to get frozen inside of the hut. But other than that, I give the Wilderness Altar two thumbs up. It's got to be the best, if not one of the best, skilling spots inside of the Wildy. Now you may be wondering why I'm deciding to do just the Wilderness Slayer Cave instead of all of Wilderness Slayer. Well, that's because Wilderness Slayer kind of sucks. 
But this cave is actually pretty decent with the recent updates that we've had in the past couple of months. With new blighted items on the drop table, as well as having the chance of getting yourself a Ring of Wealth and View Scroll or a Magic Shortbow and View Scroll, there's a lot of money to be made here, and at a decent XP rate if you're choosing the right tasks. Not only that, but you can also expect to see a Laren's Key guaranteed for every superior you kill for the Jellies, Abyssal Demons, Necreals, and Dust Devils that they recently added to the caves, which is a huge boost to the GP per hour. In just this task alone, I was able to get four Laren's Keys, a Hard Clue, and 800k GP in the looting bag. With the Laren's Keys, that's probably around 1.8 million gold in one task of 130 Jellies. And I still was able to keep an XP rate of above 6 60,000 XP per hour, although I was in full Ancestral. Shortly after this, I was able to get a Necreal's task of about 90, and even with Slaughter Bracelets, I finished the task in 20 minutes and made 1 million GP with one Laren's Key. I had to reset the XP per hour a few times, and unfortunately, I didn't get a single superior from this task, but with the inclusion of superiors, you probably could get around 75,000 XP per hour here. I also tested the Amulet of Avarice to see if it would be any better, but unfortunately, noting the drops doesn't help you that much here, and you also lose out on 10 percent mage damage from the occult so i would say just use an occult also it was not the most comfortable being in full ancestral with a skull but with that said i did only see one person try to attack me in the entire two hours that i was doing wilderness slayer it's still pretty dead in these caves which is unfortunate because i think there's a lot of potential here most of which you will be seeing in the next video as i go more in depth on what you can do in this cave a classic spot in the wilderness, and also a great place to learn how to tank test while also making money in the meantime, it is Black Chins. Catching Black Chins in the wilderness gives you an advantage of using an extra trap of up to six if you have the hunter level. Being able to tick manipulate them certainly helps with the GP per hour, but it is by no means necessary in order to make a good amount of GP doing this. The reason why it is such a good place to learn how to anti-PK or tank test is because you only need about seven or eight spots for your hunting supplies. So there's plenty of room to take an anti-PK weapon like an AGS or a Claws to Gmall, or perhaps just bring a lot of tank and get yourself familiar with tank testing. At the end of this session of 30 minutes, I was able to get myself 75,000 experience or 148,000 XP an hour and around 750,000 GP worth of chins. This would be about 1.5 million if I'd gone the full hour. If you aren't using tick manipulation, you can still expect to see around 8 or 900k GP an hour, of course, depending on your hunter level. Mine was 95. As for PKers, nobody attacked me in the 30 minutes, so I guess I got kind of lucky, but this is a place that PKers often go to, so make sure you're wary of that. Now let's get to the real money. The last section of this video is going to include obscure money makers, one of which I covered in a previous video where I nearly made 10 million GP an hour by enchanting ruby dragon bolts at the Fountain of Rune. There's a couple more I'd like to go over in this video, and one of them includes the Revenant Caves. One of the most valuable drops in this cave is a 16 million GP relic. This relic can be traded into an emblem trader on a target world for 16 million GP. However, when most players get this, they just immediately put it into the GE, which means there is profit to be made here. Something else to keep in mind is that you can note these relics to give to the emblem trader, which means you only have to take up one inventory space for this method. Couple that with the fact that it's around 40,000 GP profit for each emblem turned in, and you can make some serious money here. But there is one major drawback, and it's the size of your bank. The relics do take a while to buy off the GE, and if you don't have a GP value in your bank that is above 500 million, well, it's going to be kind of tedious only bringing about three, four, or five every single time, which is what I ended up having to do. However, I still made 160,000 GP, so this is a pretty good moneymaker if you're willing to risk this much in the wilderness. Theoretically, if you did have 4 billion GP, you could buy the GE limit of 250 of them, take half of them out, get max cash, then take the other half out and get the next max cash, and this would amount you to around 10 million GP made in roughly 2 to 3 minutes of work. 
but at the same time, you will be risking max cash. So if you do get caught, I sincerely hope you know how to tank. Now let's move on to the next and last section in this video. I saved one of the best for last. It is the Wilderness Volcano and making Odium and Malediction Wards. This is a method that is similar to using the Emblem Trader in the Rev Caves, but costs much less GP and is still a very good profit. I'll start off by saying that I bought 24 of each Malediction piece so that I can make the whole ward myself. Now in pieces form, it gets to be around 2.1 million GP, but the Malediction ward as a whole sells for 2.4 million. So that's 300k profit every single time you make and sell one of these wards. Now it is a bit more involved in the emblem trader method and a bit riskier because you have to fill your entire inventory full of shards if you want to do it in a timely manner, but it is also much cheaper as I was only spending around 50 to 60 mil to get these 24 shards and after 8 minutes I was able to make 7.2 million GP. Now the only downside to this is that it does take a while to get some good prices on those shards. However, at least it doesn't take a gargantuan bank like it did the Emblem Trader method. As I said, I spent about 50 million GP, got about 57 million GP back after making them all into the ward. I know I didn't go over the Revenant Caves as much, but I kind of did that in my last video. As far as the Wilderness Slayer Caves go, you will be seeing that very soon on this channel, as I want to look at that much more in depth than I have currently. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, make sure and give it a like, and if you want to see more risky content, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this has been Poison Potion, or PP for short. Make sure to stay safe and wildy, but never forget to play high risk.